Who doesn't love a shop tour? Well, this is going to be no exception for you guys. My wood shop used to only be this half, and now, after a garage renovation, I have fully expanded to both sides of my garage. So come along with me. I'm going to show you where I'm at right now and where I want to be in the future. We're going to talk big ideas. I'll leave no stone unturned. Let's get started. Let me start out by talking about my workbench. This was pretty much the first thing that I ever built in this shop. I got the table saw, which this is the DeWalt job site table saw. It has an eight and a quarter inch blade, 15 amps. It's been a workhorse for me. I bought this and then I knew I wanted outfeed. I just did not want to be on my hands and knees on the ground working with a table saw. So I built this workbench. It is basically not square at all. Uh, very rugged built, but it's very sturdy and it's done so much for me. One thing that I did was this channel, if you come look over here, I made this channel right here, which does allow me to do cross cuts. If I have, let's say, um, circular saw, I use this little channel right here. Of course, you got to be careful not to hit the, the saw, but I use this channel a lot in the past to make cross cuts on here without having to cut into my workbench. This is a maple plywood top with a polyurethane finish. I keep my miter saw underneath here, and that's been a temporary home for a very long permanent time, but it is a hassle taking that thing up and putting it on top of this workbench to use, but we'll talk about that more later. I have a Harbor Freight dust collector down here. I don't even know what brand this is, to be honest with you. It's red. Oh, it's a Bauer. Okay, so really cheap, but I tell you what, it's done the trick for me all these years and it hasn't failed on me. Fills up now and then, I empty it, but I gotta say it doesn't have the best suction, but it does, it does the trick. So way to go Harbor Freight, Bauer on that one. So where do I wanna be in the future? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. At some point, I would love to get a 10 inch cabinet making saw, something like a Harvey or a saw stop, but that's what I wanna do. This bench, I imagine still having, but being mostly just an assembly table over on the other side of the shop out of the way, I would then have my own outfeed table as well. With the new outfeed table from the future, I would like to see some storage options here, some drawers, cupboards, different doodads for maybe some clamps or different tools I'm gonna to be using when using the table saw. So that's what I see for this. I don't think I'm gonna want it open like this. I'm gonna find a home for all this stuff and just maybe have access for my dust collection down there, but that would be cool. Lots of drawers, different storage stuff. I just think that is the next natural progressive step in here. That's what I see for the future for this area of the shop. Let's move this out of the way. Everything in this shop is on wheels. I'm gonna move this out of the way so we can take a better look in this corner. So come over here. This is my new tapestry with my logo. If you notice, it's, uh, uh, this is Dude Sauna's channel. It says, dude, kinda in a, anyways. But, I got this idea from watching a glimpse inside. I saw that he had this big tapestry in the back that's white and it has his logo. And I thought, oh, that's great. So I got a 50 by 50 inch tapestry off Etsy. It was literally $20. And it really kind of took up this blank space that I wanted something to be here. So it's been a great backdrop. Also down here, I keep all my jigs. So I have my cross cut sled tapering jig. This goes to the other side of the cross cut sled. My shelf pin jig. These are jigs that I use to put the hinges on the doors. It's a door hinge jig, but obviously there's still some vacant space here. There's some vacant space down here. And I imagine as I come up with more jig ideas, this is where I'll mount them. I just mount them. What I do is I find the studs and I put these lag bolts straight into the studs and drill holes and they hang real easy that way. So it's a bit rugged, but works out really good. They just come right off just like that. So I love hanging them so easily here. 
So where do I go in the future? Well, I have some vacant real estate on the wall up here, and frankly, I don't know what I'm gonna put there. I would like something decor-like. I don't know, I see these other guys' shops and they have bits and bits and total boat. I mean, I'm not sponsored by any of those guys, but it'd be cool to have something up there. So there is some vacant real estate. I do hang my bandsaw blades up here. So stuff that I don't use a lot, the higher they can be. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll just put a bunch of bandsaw blades up there, but that'd be cool to look at too. Next, let me tell you about my French cleat wall. Now, after I built the workbench, I put in this cleat wall. I had built some of the holders. All the holders that you see that aren't painted were the first holders that I built. And then later on, I started doing videos on certain holders and I made certain designs and I painted them. And frankly, I, I'd like for them all to be painted and that's just something that I can do in the future, but I just haven't really got around to it. So let me show you some of these holders that I did that have been just amazing for the shop to have and a lot of people seem to like them. This is a multi-tool holder, just holds every little hand, small little tool. It's a bit of a mess, but it is carrying a ton of weight. But I have two cleats on here that are resting. I also have some storage under here where I keep some gloves and some uh, big wrenches. And, and I just love it. This is, this is my wife loves coming in here when she needs like a screwdriver or something. She can uh, easily find whatever she needs. So. Love this, all the little cubbies has been awesome. I got all my clamps over here. Never found a great home for these things, but they just kind of hang there. And for the meantime, they do. I'm not, I don't have any big plans for that. This is my sanding storage unit. And I did a video on this and I have plans available for this, for my square sheets, random orbital sheets, belt sander sheets, some miscellaneous items down here, hand sanders. I have the uh, Bosch sander, which I did a review on, and I gave a negative review on it, and I s still have it, and I just have been spending my money on other things, and so even though I don't like it, I still have it, but we'll talk about more about that later. I just keep some decor up here. This is a little Pinewood Derby car. Uh, this is not regulation because it's made of walnut and maple, but I just had that up here and I put a little polyurethane finish on here. My son just did this as an art project and uh, he was just having fun and painted it up. He's a very good artist. So I display that up here. Where do I see myself in the future? Let me just tell you right now, I see a Festool sander taking the place. Maybe the, what's it called, the Rotex? That's what I see for the future for this tool right here. Move along over here, I have my Craig Pocket Hole Jig Station with Kaizen Foam. I put all the tools in the Kaizen Foam. It hangs here, it's awesome when I need it. I'm able to put long planks all the way across here because the jig is only about three, four inches wide. So this is awesome. It just, it hangs up here and then it lies flat on the bench when I need to use it. I have this drill charging station. Got a little magnetized and it's just full of clutter. And I don't have a good solution for all this stuff, but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. This has a magnetic strip all the way across here. If you come on the side over here and you see there's a little hole and there are rare earth magnets all inside there. And then there's a strip here that covers all of that. And I could put my most used bits right here and they're easy to get to, which I love all my drill bits down below here as well. This is a, oh, I also have a multi, os oscillating multi-tool here on the side. And when I do these projects, I like to coordinate the color with the tool. So this is DeWalt over here and this is Milwaukee over here. I don't have plans for this, but I do have a video on it. I do have a video on this for storing your track saw rail guides. These are both four footers. What do I see for the future for this wall? A couple things. Number one, I got some vacant real estate up here that for my lesser used items, I think I want to put them up there. I think the circular saw is less used because I use the track saw more. And that's kind of something that kind of hang up here and get it when I need it. But any future tools that I have, the less used ones I'm going to move up there. So I want to fill that space up there. 
A tool that I want to get is, that I don't have yet is brad tipped drill bits. So that's something that I think would go right here perfectly. Another thing that I need to get is an eight foot track saw rail guide. I think what I would do is kind of shift this this way, probably nail it to this beam up here. They have these little holes right in the, at the end of the track saw. I think I could just hang it right here. And that's something that I want to get eventually. I have found after using two four footers and connecting them, I wish I had an eight foot track saw rail guide. It's fine, but there's less imperfections when you use a full eight foot piece. And I learned that the hard way. Next up, this is, I think the newest addition to the shop. A video came out recently on these cabinets. I have plans available if you wanna build these cabinets for sale on my Etsy store. Let me just say this right now. I have about five or six different things that have plans. I'm doing a shop bundle. I'm gonna put all my plans in one bundle for a super low price. So if you guys want that, I'm gonna leave a link in the description and you can pick up plans for this and several other things. But I painted them a uh, kind of a cool design. I wanted something different. I wanted to stand out a little bit. No one's ever done anything like this as far as I could tell. I was inspired by some model homes that I went through in my neighborhood who were kind of a newer development and they had some maple cabinets with an accented like black cabinet here or there. The combination I just thought was amazing looking and I took that whole black on maple look and created these cabinets. I like the trim that I have underneath here it, it, for so you have this recessed space underneath because I want to do something with that recessed space in the future, which I'll talk about. Let's see what's inside the drawers. Let's come over here. This is all of my stains and finishes and some paint stuff and primers. Lots of cool stuff there. In this cupboard, a lot of miscellaneous things, but all my glues, the blue cans, which got your mineral spirits and lacquer thinner, things like that, paint thinner, adhesive sprays lubricants, some more glue, uh, Starbond glues. So I got a few epoxy things here that actually Total Bolt sent me a long time ago and I haven't used them yet, but I have used the Halcyon Clear varnish that they sent me, which I really like. And so I've featured that in many of my videos. So shout out to Total Bolt. Thank you for being so kind to support the maker community. That was really nice. I know they do that for a lot of makers. So just want to thank them for that. I have attachments here for dust collection. This is the, uh, geez, we call this a mud pan. And some mis miscellaneous things. Uh, what's this? Uh, oh, my laser level with, I don't have a tripod, but it, I seem to work around it. In this middle cabinet, I keep a lot of my uh, YouTube stuff. So tripods, different lighting things, light bulbs, extension cords. And this one over here, some sanding stuff, some zero clearance plates for the miter saw. That's the original. And then there's some zero clearance plates I bought on Amazon. They came with a three pack. So one of them is in my miter saw right now. Old dowling jig. This is a new tool I just bought a multi tool or what's it called a multimeter because I'm in the process of fixing our microwave and I'm waiting for parts to come in. And so I barely know how to use this, but enough to think that the right part that we're ordering is going to fix it. Angle grinder, a few miscellaneous, a coping saw, and my sharpening supplies, all my sharpening for the Scary Sharp from Taylor Tools. I use that for, to sharpen my chisels. Moving blanket as well in there. And this last one, I uh, got some knee pads, a tool belt, miscellaneous stuff, miscellaneous hardware. I got some industrial strength, uh, Velcro. Anyways, nothing too exciting there. but. These cabinets have been a lifesaver. So what do I see for the future? Well, because I have this recessed area here, I'm going to put LED lights underneath here. And I think I can do it so they won't even be seen because you can drill in the hole up and drill off the side of the cabinet, come underneath here and all around. I got a plug right over here, a 120 plug that everything can plug into. So that's what I see for the future is these LED lights, but why have LED lights if I don't have a miter saw station? So underneath here, my plan for 2024 is to do a miter saw station. I've been talking about it for a long time. 
And I swear I'm going to do it this time. I finally got a, a good plan. I've come up with many iterations in my brain of what I want to do. But all these tools will have to find a new home. And we'll put the miter saw right here. My current DeWalt miter saw will be gotten rid of. And I'm going to get a new one. I think I'm going to go with the Makita. It's got the high fence. And it's able to go up against the wall so that it will be... It, 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 the, the wall just, I can't do it because it sticks out too far. It's got those double rails in the back. So looking forward to that. I, what I'm going to do is do maple as well and some type of black pattern so that it'll all blend together. And with the LED lights coming down on top, it's going to look pretty nice. So looking forward to that. This red tool cart I have had for, gosh, I think over 10, maybe 15 years. It's kind of a catch-all. Of course, it has my rigid oscillating belt sander, spindle sander right here. Through some of the drawers, a lot of my uh, ratchet sets that I use. Mostly I use those if I'm putting some lag bolts in or doing some work on the car. More wrenches, just a hodgepodge of crap in this drawer. Not much to speak of. Uh, once again, just another hot, got some gloves, zip ties, those come in handy. I always have zip ties on handy because they come in handy. They're very helpful. Cocking, wood filler, a lot of little car things, car related tools. Here's all my fasteners. Now, if you guys have great ideas for fasteners storage, this has been getting me by, but, but where do I see myself in the future? I see some form of fastener and nail and small hardware storage something on a wall somewhere, maybe back on that side. I'm not sure yet. I just haven't gotten to it. This has been getting me by. But when I get little things or whatever, I just kind of throw them in these little cubbies and these cubbies get filled up with all kinds of stuff. It's a bit of a mess. So definitely some room for improvement there in the future. And then this last drawer, let me just say, I keep all the manuals for everything that I buy. I do find once in a while that I need to reference these. So that's a little tip. Keep your manuals, even though people like to read them, they do come in handy when you really, really need them. Uh, I got some contour gauges in here, staple gun, miscellaneous stuff, a little lighting for YouTube. And that's this cart right here. Also, I have this uh, vice that was gifted to me. Someone was moving. I was getting rid of some stuff. And this little vice is pretty nice. I just uh, put it on the bench top. I can clamp it down and has really come in handy. So I like that. My router table needs a home. It needs a cart to go on or something. This is a Bosch router table. I should probably get another router so I don't have to take it in and out when I need to use it. For the future, tell me what you think I should do. Should I build a cart for this to be on, on wheels that rolls around? Or should I have it integrated into my future table saw, my 10 inch cabinet saw? I know saw stuff has a deal where they have the table saw and then next to it they have the router table integration if you guys know anything about that or think that's a good idea let me know in the comments because i don't know quite what to do yet i just basically take this put it on top of the workbench clamp it down with these boards and it's done the trick for me but as far as workflow it is a hassle to put that up on the bench and over here i have my ryobi drill press once again just like the router table i put up on the workbench so my question to you is, should I build a cart for this to go on and so it could roll around on wheels? Or should I just upgrade to a larger drill press? It's a floor model that you can, you know, I'll put everything on wheels, but should I go bigger? Or do you think this does the trick? So far, it's been okay for me, but there have been a few instances where having a nicer and bigger drill press would really come in handy. But I got to say, I do like this drill press and what it offers. Above the cabinets has been a place to put things where I don't really have a home for, which is my track saw. I have these two sanding tools that were gifted to me along with this Ryo. It's still in the box, it hasn't even been taken. I just took it. I have a Dremel already, but I just took it. They were given away and it's still in the box. Maybe for a rainy day, I'll pull that out. But these need homes. These, these tools need homes, maybe someday. 
Coming over to the other side, also, if you notice, when we did the uh, garage makeover, we painted above here as well. Now, the, let me tell you about the colors in here. This color up here is called satin black. And the black that I painted on the cabinets is called blackout. And those two colors, to me, kind of went. I don't know if you agree or not, but I put the two little swatches next to each other and I said, all right, that's what we're going with. I want as black as I could get with those cabinets. And I really like this satin black color, even though it's got definitely has some blue tones to it. This is a new tool that I got this year. And I will say right now, I love it. This is an eight inch jointer from Jet. It has a helical head and the finish on this is amazing. Cast iron. The fence is easily adjustable. It's set all up for 90 degrees, so my jointing is flawless. I put it on this stand that I made, and then I painted it the same color that I put on the cabinets, the blackout color. So it kind of blends in. It's easily movable, which I love. Moving over here is my 17-inch Grizzly bandsaw. This bandsaw is probably more tool than what most woodworkers would get for a shop of this size. I think the 14 inch bandsaw is what most people get when they get a bandsaw, they wanna get a big bandsaw. The only reason why I got the 17 inch was because I thought I'm just gonna go just a bit bigger. If I can afford to go one step bigger, then I will and at the time, I did and I don't regret it. Even though I don't know if I'm using it to its capacity, I gotta say, I love having this big bandsaw. I keep a resaw blade on it mostly and I've used it for resawing, which has been very helpful. I use this side of the bandsaw for all of my machinist squares. Any tools that come with a tool, Allen wrenches, different wrenches, screwdrivers, I put them all here on rare earth magnets. And so if I am working with my miter saw or my table saw or any saw or tool, I know it's gonna be one of these tools. The only thing that I should do that I haven't done is label them all, which tool they go to, because sometimes I have to kind of figure it out, but that would be a helpful uh, tip to go with. Where do I see myself in the future for the years down the road? Well, maybe labeling those, that's for one, but you know what I need? I don't have, large scale four inch hose dust collection. I've been using these dust collectors here to attach them, it's kind of a hassle, but this seems like a great space to put a large dust collector, cyclone or something. I haven't done a lot of research into it and what would be good for my shop, but this is a good corner to hang it and put four inch hose to these tools right here. I do have 220 but I should get probably another 220 off here, somewhere in this area that I wouldn't have to switch the plugs back and forth to these machines. Plus if I get dust collection, will it be 220? I really have no idea. But I do have, um, I do have 120 right here, so that's good. And I have 120 over here. Just, if you haven't noticed, when I redid the shop, I painted all my extension cords the same color as the wall because that orange was just so ugly. I, I, I went all, all out on all this conduit, painted the same color, same color, same color. I thought it would look a lot better if I did that. Where do I see myself in the future with my bandsaw, a second bandsaw? I want to be able to keep my resaw blade on this and have another bandsaw for more scrolling and things like that. So the question is, is should I just get another full-sized bandsaw and keep a thinner blade on it? Or should I just get a bench top bandsaw that's on a rolling cart or somewhere on a workbench? I'm gonna do something, not sure when, not sure what, but you give me your thoughts, I wanna hear. Let's talk about my planer. This is the DeWalt 13 inch. This, from all my research, is the best planer, bench top planer that you can get with the least amount of snipe. It's got a 13 inch capacity 
everyone raves about it and I feel the same. Now, this is not a helical head. It does have the straight blades, which is fine, but yes, the helical head would be much better. Now, what it's on here right now, I have a whole video that I haven't finished yet. I started building this around Thanksgiving when our son Austin was in town and we did this together and that video is coming soon. So it's a work in progress, it'll be painted. I'm still ironing out the dust collection and there's some problems with that. So I'm hoping to solve that riddle soon, but love my planer. Where do I see myself in the future? Should I get a larger planer with bigger capacity? Should I go with something like a floor model that's 20 inches long, 24 inches, where I can do a lot more? That's definitely a possibility for the future, but for the meantime, this is gonna be a lower priority to switch over to a larger planer. If I start doing a lot of projects that require it, then I'll get it faster. But for the meantime, we'll see how long this one lasts me. Maybe I'll just even upgrade to a helical head for this unit. You tell me, what should I do? Another addition to my shop for the makeover, I didn't feature it in the video, but I did put it in the video, is this fridge. Now, this is a retro looking fridge, Galans or Gallons, I'm not even sure. It, I'm telling you right now, it's from Home Depot. I got it from Home Depot. You can get it from Amazon and, and actually you can go to their website and get it as well. This is all made of the cheapest plastic possible. It's cheap stuff from China, but I wish that these were like heavy duty metal, like the old retro ones. It's not that by any means, but I will say it does get the drinks super, super cold. It's got a freezer at the top. I keep some big ice cubes in there. Also, it's got plenty of storage in here. We put it, we use it just for drinks. So this is all we use it for and overflow for milk and things like that. Water bottles. We got all kinds of stuff in here. We love it. I think it's great. I'm curious how long it's going to last. But if you want one, click on the link in the description. Looking to the future, I have an idea. Tell me your thoughts. To me, this is my solar equipment. I don't even know what it's called. This is my tankless water heater. My idea is because I just don't like looking at them. They are an eyesore for the shop. They just don't blend in, right? What if I built a cabinet around it? It would be a backless cabinet. It hangs right on there. It's got a door. It'll have any venting that it needs. A door that opens and hangs on a fringe cleat on this side, as well as over here. I think that would be a really cool idea to cover these with cabinets, just so I don't have to look at them, but still have access to them if I need to. And I can quickly remove the cabinet because it's just hanging on a cleat. Tell me what your thoughts, but that's something that I would like to do possibly this year. This is my scrap wood storage cart, and this has been my best seller on Etsy for the digital plans that I have. So if you're interested, they're available. Let me tell you why I love this cart. First off, this is a Dude Sawdust original with the small scrap storage with the acrylic shelf. And the point behind this is small scraps get lost and end up at the bottom of anything. This allows me to see all of my small scraps. I even put some blades in here as well for my miter saw and my table saw, easy access and I know where they're at. It also has bins for your smaller cutoffs. And then if you come around to this side, this, this unit is six feet long. I made it six feet for a reason. Someone complained that it was not eight feet because it couldn't hold eight foot sheets. Well, there's a reason why is that most people probably don't want an eight foot long storage cart for their scrap wood. You can still put eight foot sheets. They're just gonna stick off a foot here and a foot off the other end. I just figured it was a better way of doing it, but uh, one, two, three, four tiers, and even the top I use for storage and setting stuff on. I'm gonna pull it out and you can see on this side, it's got about a seven inch capacity for, for scrap wood for your large sheets of plywood. I don't have any large sheets right now, just a lot of sheet goods, quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, MDF, all kinds of stuff, maple, plywood, pine. But you can put full sheets on that side. This I love, I put, it ends up being a good catch all for stuff. Where do I see myself for the future in regards to this space and this cart? Well, 
For the card itself, I don't want to plan on making any changes, but the location might change. If I do keep it here and I start accumulating more wood, at some point I could put a lumber rack up on the wall here. I don't have plans for that, but this would be an ideal space. Now, the other idea that I have is if I ever wanted to do a, a laser, a CNC, or 3D printing, this space right here would be ideal for that, and I can move this cart over by the garage door, which would be just fine. There's a lot of open space here, and I wanna talk about that open space right now. With the recent garage shop makeover that I did, I have created all this space in the middle of the shop. Now, a lot of people don't have this much space for their shops. I totally get that. I'm very fortunate to have basically what comes down to a three car garage, maybe even a little extra because you could fit a car here, car here, car there, but this space right here is another half car garage square footage. So what am I gonna do with this floor? Well, number one, don't expect any epoxy floors in here because I'm just too lazy to move everything out and put an epoxy floor, although that would be kind of nice. But I do see an assembly table here for the future. Um, I do see some of these tools over here on rolling stations that can take up some of the middle space. I do see this table going over here somewhere when I put my new 10 inch table saw over there. So I see kind of like two assembly tables, maybe a woodworking bench. So that's something that I do see for the future, but who knows when? I got a lot of time to figure that out. Let's talk about lighting. Now, I am a little embarrassed to show you this, but number one, this place is well lit. But when I got the lights to put them up here, I installed them, one could say incorrectly because I didn't know what I was doing. But it gets the job done. So take a peek, look up there. Do you notice anything wrong with the ceiling? Well, this one was installed much later because these lights actually connect to each other. I didn't have to do this rigmarole where they kind of zigzag and serpentine all the way down. They actually connect to each other and I was too dumb to figure that out. But I did figure it out once I got over here. These lights keep this place super well lit. I probably have maybe more than I need, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 in my workspace. I have these two in my non-workspace and I have 14 on this side as well. At least I should. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 lights as well. If you want some shop lights like mine, I'll leave a link in the description and you can get yours. I'm gonna put a lot of different links for some of the things that we talked about today, including the Etsy store plans, some of the tools that I use, and I hope that uh, if you wanna support the channel, you can go and pick those up. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Next up, I have a video for you right here. You're not gonna wanna miss where I show you how to build these cabinets and show you that cabinets in your shop don't have to be boring. Click on the video, make sure you've subscribed, like this video, please leave a comment. Tour's over.